Hey, welcome to the channel. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Um, woken up last night, um, digging in deep again on covert emotional incest. Covert emotional incest is not a normal relationship between mother and child or adult child. It is nothing to do with the normal relationship healthy relationship with boundaries between mother and child and when I say child I would like you to hold the thought of adult children as well. Covert emotional incest is nine times out of ten the result of a intimacy less a lack of intimacy between two adults in a relationship um, a result of uh, unresolved in the parental relationship, a result of fighting in the parent relationship, uh, and a distancing, intimate distancing between the two adults in the relationship where the children are then chosen to be surrogated emotionally where the parent can be mother or father um, begin to share the intimate part of their life and expose the child to the intimate part of their life as a way of soothing um, because there is no soothing through the parent to parent relationship there's a loss of intimacy so the intimacy aspect the the starving of intimacy the loss of intimacy between the two parents um, and the parent surrogate a child as a result of that makes it incestual the covert side of it is um, you will usually not see it unless you're around these people long enough to be able to um, be in a position where there's an effect on you and you're starting to question what is actually going on in this relationship um, between these people. I've seen some, oh, over the last 25 years in the relationships I have had, I've seen some um, just normal affection between adults and children but I've seen it cross the line terribly so it's a fine line between um, the normal affections and communications and interactions between the parent child and the crossing over into the dysfunctional aspects of covert emotional incest where they're fueling each other emotionally um, on a parent-to-parent -parent level rather than on a parent-to-child level as a source of filling the gap or filling the lack of the absence of the in the absence of the other person the other parent or the negligence of the other parent I hope that makes sense because it's not an attack on healthy parent-child relationships. That's what we want. It's the fear of them going into covert emotional incest because it damages the parent, the adult child and people involved with these people. Um, and probably more so the people involved with these people because it's a massive um, waste of time, I can tell you. Uh, you are in with people that do have the capability of loving, but you'll more than likely be a source of um, sexual supply rather than emotional supply because emotional connection will be between the DNA parent child. They will cohort against their relationships, they will stroke each other's ego, 
as they come in to each other uh, for their when they meet each other um, they'll be sarcastic arrogant they'll share intimate things they may complain or pull down their partners um, there's usually not too much positivity going on around the partners because the covert emotional incest relationship has to be protected and edified and built and it can't be built on interferers. The interferers are just a source of supply that cannot be supplied by the parent or the child to the parent or the child. Um, otherwise it'd be crossing over into physical incest which is criminal because of why would it be criminal? Because it causes severe damage to the people involved. Psychological and mental damage. Um, but covert emotional incest can cross over into that because it damages the relationship and causes loss of relationships for parent and child. Um, and if this is um, protected to the point where people just will not be involved with this pe these people, it's too evident, it's too manifest, then in some cases at the um, way in which the emotions work, if, everything, if the stars align, um, it will go into physical sexual incest. But that is not the subject of this talk. Uh, people in covert emotional incest will undermine their relationships. It's very narcissistic. I have to come out and say it. It is very narcissistic. It has the traits of narcissism. It starts with love bombing. Um, I've met some of these single mums. You'll be in bed with them uh, within an hour. I've had a dozen or so cases of this. I've met them on the waterfront where I live and within an hour you're into it. I know that sounds terrible and rude but I'm on this channel to help people. Um, from not reading books, from real life experiences. And, and I, was, I was shocked. I was accommodating but I was shocked. And several of them disappeared as quickly as they came. Uh, and the only thing I can put down to that is where I spoke to a couple of them in the three or four hours that I was with them. Um, they said that they had grievances with their partners, husbands, um, and this was their way of trying to deal with that. And this happens a lot. I can remember when I was a surfer, bricklayer, about the age of 24 or something, up in Newcastle. Uh, hooked up with this bird uh, in a pub. Blondie took me home. Uh, Jennifer, her name was. Hi, Jennifer, if you're watching. Um, took me home. I didn't know anything about her. And we're into it. Oh, this, I've only known her for half an hour or so. She only lived up the street there, Hamilton. And we're into it. And this is how it works. This is, the, this is the mentality of these people. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock on, knock on the door. Mummy, mummy, who is this? And it's a little girl. And I thought, oh my God, like, where's the responsibility of these people? Now, this is what I'm trying to say about love bombing. Or limerence. Um, it's much deeper than you think, limerence and love bombing. It's not a shallow thing. These people will abandon all responsibility to fulfill their sexual desire at that time. Um, and, you know, they say limerence can work for... Limerence can work overnight. It's just lust. It's just desire. It's just the human nature um, being fulfilled by someone that it's attracted to. 
So it can be overnight, it can be six months, it can be 12 months. The rubber hits the road though when that's gone, how interested one or the other is in the other. Usually the dissolve of these, forget about the one night stands and the two week flings and all this stuff. Um, if the relationship goes deeper, uh, covert emotional incest won't usually manifest unless you're around that person long enough for it to manifest. Now, you will get the normal parent or child resistances to a new partner or to an old partner and all that. Um, these are all the normal things. Covert emotional incest is much deeper than that. It, it, it is more wicked than that. It is not frightened to... See, it's fly on the wall stuff. If you're not a fly on the wall, you will not be aware of what's going on behind your back. And there's a lot going on. These people grandize each other. They stroke each other's ego. They sulk to each other. They teach each other to be victims. Um, they'll share in their substances together emotional and um, drugs and medications and things and this will grandize their victim status um, they're stubborn they're vicious uh, if you get to a point where you're starting to manifest it um, and why have I got to, I could go on and on and on they're gonna they're gonna talk about the partners behind their backs they're going to wonder why the mother or the, the adult child has a partner. Aren't I good enough? I know that sounds crazy, but that's the incest part of it. There's always this, aren't I good enough? This sense of betrayal. Then on the other hand, shame for thinking that way and guilt. That's why they medicate. That's why they use substances. It's a constant seesaw of emotions and and dysfunction and they know and sense the dysfunction they know it's not right so they're constantly in conflict with themselves that manifests into being into conflict with each other and then they escape to the partner but they're only using the apart the partner as a form of intimacy which they can't uh, gratify through the covert emotional incest and just quickly the difference between covert emotional incest and actual physical sexual incest is covert emotional incest will leave the person grandized uh, physical sexual incest will leave the person demoralized um, why have I got the mummy and the Egyptian plagues on the screen well I'm running out of time, but I would like you to join me in the next talk where I'm going to show you that Pharaoh, who Moses was having to deal with to get the people from Israel out of Egypt and on to the Promised Land, um, was so deceptive so stubborn and relentless what he would do when Moses would say look let my people go he would he would make out he was going to let the people go right he would waste time in these people thinking that they were going to be allowed to leave and then he would change his mind Okay, so you're in a relationship and you're trying to bring resolve. That person will feign resolve because they'll have you at a distance. They'll feign resolve, right? And what you need to remember is Moses was raised by Pharaoh and his family and he had a revelation of who he was. It's the same in a relationship. You meet somebody and you go through the bump, bom the love bombings phase, which is basically 
um, the intimacy and everything's A grade. So there's going to be an element of sacrifice and commitment to that, um, to the negligence of other responsibilities, including the covert emotional incest. Um, that's how the love bombing stage works. But the love bombing stage can't hold time. Time will work against it. And this is what happened with Fa the Jewish people and Pharaoh. They couldn't hold time long enough. Um, resolve had to be met. See, what these covert... Um, intimacy leeches do is they leave you in an element of hope but the underlying consequence of that hope will be disappointment and the bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick right and they, so if there's hope deferred right things are going to get sick and this is how it all works this is what's happening out there today People are under the illusion of a committed relationship. But it's not. <coughs> it's just an illusion. <coughs> but it's a good enough illusion to keep you in. Okay, there's all different combinations and circumstances and ways in which this works um, what I'm trying to do is lay a foundation to show you how covert how stealth how clever covert emotional incest is and while it's working on you while you're hoping for um, <clears throat> what was happening when you first met this person to return because they'll undermine the initial um, nirvana as it were the initial dopamine inputs that there is going to be a crisis there's going to be a engagement where you'll be impressed and you'll build on that impression of the person and then they'll then something's going to happen some they're gonna the conditioning will start the as Sam Vachnin as far as I'm concerned the greatest uh, um, leading edge teacher on narcissism worldwide says you'll be entrained they'll start entraining you they'll start conditioning you to begin to um, without you even knowing be subservient work your life around, submit to, come under the authority of the covert emotional incest. And there's a lot, the reason why I've got this screen up, we're going to get into it. Um, we're going to get right into this. I'm going to show you how tough it is, how clever it is, how evil it is. Um, and by the end of this series, you're going to know, you're going to know what you're dealing with. Um, this is a very powerful evil force that's undermining masculinity it's part of the pulling down of the fathers um, and a result of no fathers and men not playing their part the way they should <coughs> this is reverend dr jw morrison theologist don't miss the next talk we're going to get into it bye for now